It is my hope that this presentation can provide some useful documentation in support of the effort to expose the ongoing crime of chemtrail spray operations being perpetrated against the human race and our planet's environment. My research into the chemtrail phenomenon began much like many others. I began to keep photographic documentation of chemtrail spray activity over my home in Phoenix, Arizona. I began to wonder how aircraft contrails, which are said to be icy crystals of water vapor, could persist in the atmosphere over one of the driest places on Earth, the Sonoran Desert. The official government story is that the aircraft contrails that we see forming parallel lines, grids, X's, and circles are simply persistent contrails that form when water vapor from hot jet engine exhaust rapidly condenses in the extremely cold temperatures of the upper atmosphere and can persist as icy crystals of cirrus type clouds under the right conditions of atmospheric relative humidities which are above 60 percent. Using the required scientific parameters for persistent contrail formation, I began to check the upper atmosphere weather data which is collected on a twice daily basis with sensors and instrumentation attached to weather balloons. What I discovered was that during periods of significant persistent contrail activity, the relative humidity was in most cases well below the 60% required for the formation of persistent contrails. What you are now observing is chemtrail spray operations captured on National Weather Service Doppler radar during periods of significant chemtrail activity over the cities of Phoenix, Flagstaff, Las Vegas, and San Diego. It should be obvious that the bright linear clouds depicted on the Doppler radars are being deposited by aircraft since they start at a single point and then spread out across the screen. In most cases the aircraft can be seen flying in the same direction somewhat close together as if they were flying in some sort of military formation or coordinated operation. It is interesting to note that there are no other aircraft appearing to leave contrail formations flying in other directions even though these cities represent some of the busiest airspaces in our nation's air traffic control system. The very bright colors of the aircraft contrails shown on the Doppler radar screens represent a very strong radar return signal strength of 20 decibels or above based upon the graph shown on the left hand side of the Doppler image. According to the National Weather Service, Doppler return signal strength of 20 decibels and above is indicative of light rain or moderate snowfall. Despite the fact that the brightly colored linear contrails resemble what we often associate on Doppler radar with heavy thunderstorms or significant precipitation events, it should be noted that no precipitation fell on these locations on the dates and times indicated by the Doppler radar image. This Doppler radar display shows what a normal precipitation event looks like on Doppler radar during a thunderstorm over southern Arizona. It can be observed that both the color and the shape of the clouds in the Doppler display are totally different than the linear clouds we observe in the chemtrail spray operation. Many chemtrail researchers have noted that the chemtrail spray is composed of aluminum oxides, barium salts, nanoparticles, and other types of man-made materials which could account for the highly reflective nature of the aircraft contrails that we observe on these Doppler radar images. And of course the official story provided by the government is that the persistent contrails that we observe crisscrossing the sky are simply thin wispy cirrus clouds that are the result of moisture droplets emanating from jet exhaust that rapidly condense into ice crystals in the extremely cold temperatures of the stratosphere. 
However, the bottom line is that operational National Weather Service Doppler radar cannot, I repeat, cannot detect cirrus clouds. Look it up. Do the research. Another important but rather technical issue regarding the evidence of chemtrails being captured on Doppler radar has to do with the detection capabilities of Doppler radar in relation to distance and elevation from the Doppler radar's location. Based upon the information provided on this chart from the National Weather Service, we can see that the horizon-oriented Doppler weather radars, which are set to a maximum angle of 4.3 degrees, would not detect clouds above 20,000 feet within a 35-mile radius of the radar. Yet, in many cases, on these Doppler radar images, we can see the aircraft contrails almost directly overhead of the Doppler radar's location. The implications of this information is that the aircraft contrails are being deposited at an elevation that is much too low for the formation of persistent contrails. This is due to the fact that atmospheric conditions rarely achieve the required minus 40 degrees centigrade for the formation of persistent contrails at 20,000 feet elevation over the Sonoran Desert. I hope that these Doppler radar images have provided some alternative scientific documentation which can support the growing body of evidence related to the existence of the chemtrail spray operations program. I have done my best to articulate some pretty detailed information about atmospheric science that is essential to understanding the chemtrail phenomenon. But I believe we must fight disinformation and propaganda with scientific facts if we are ever to bring these aerosol crimes to the light of day. More research, images, and references can be found on my website at watchthesky.org. Thank you.